Welcome back to Mentor Nation, the podcast for entrepreneurs looking for real mentorship, real strategies, and real stories so that you can go out and build your dreams. I'm your host, John Abbas, and it's time for another episode, so buckle your seatbelt and let's go. Jared, listen, man, welcome to the Mentor Nation podcast. Uh, man, I appreciate you being on, and we're glad to have you on the podcast today. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. You've got me up at 8 a.m., which is yeah. very, oh, it's, it's tough on me. <laughs> Sorry, man. I, uh, it's 7 p.m. here, believe it or not. So as soon as this is over, we're going to cook dinner and wind down and head to bed. It's, uh, it's right. just it's so funny. I remember, no joke, before we get started, the first thing that I did uh, when we pulled into Australia when I was in the Navy, this is like 2003, I went, I got off, we pulled in on like a Wednesday, I checked into the hotel and I, I, I flushed the toilet just to see if it went backwards <laughs> in the United States. <laughs> so it, it, was, it was a really, really, really good time. But uh, thank you again for being on. And uh, we're, one of the things that I'm really excited to have you share today um, is, well, two things actually. And it's two things that I think are so important and there are two things that you have just done an outstanding job with. Uh, number one is just how to stand out in a crowded space. We have a lot of entrepreneurs that listen to this podcast, a lot of people that are always trying to figure out how to differentiate themselves and how to separate themselves from the pack. And so I'm excited for you to share that. And then number two, um, and this is something that me personally, I'm excited to learn from you today, which is just your advice and your wisdom on creativity as something that can be learned and trained versus natural ability. And so um, we're going to go into that today. But first, before we do that, I just, I have to get you to share a little bit about your story. Like, no joke, Jared, when I was researching you, you have like the most insane and like amazing life from, from looking at you from afar. Like just researching you was, was an adventure. And so I can't imagine what it's like to, to live your life. So just to give the audience yeah. a heads up, you're a world-class photographer. Uh, you're an adventurer. You were on the show Survivor. You have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers. And the list goes on and on. Um, but I'm just excited, man, to, if you could share a little bit about your story, what you do now, and just what you did that led to you doing what you do right now. Mm, it's it's quite a random list of things <laughs> when you when you lay it all out like that yeah um i remember i think i think i did you know a classic google of my own name which i, I hope other people do as well every now and then Absolutely. <laughs> and just the list of articles that that came up i was like man this is this is real random but i love it <laughs> like when you see yeah, like all, you know photography things come up alongside reality tv and there's been there's been a couple unintentional viral videos of me as well where i used to get like hurt <laughs> so it's it's the it's the craziest selection of things uh, i love it though i love it and it, it really does sum up uh, i guess my life and the way i i operate which is right. i mean I'm, I'm pretty i'm pretty happy just to do anything that's going to be fun or silly or you know that's so, cool. Now, guess, are you organized and meticulous or are you just like go with the flow, creative, like, oh man, this is, let's do this? Oh, it could go both ways. Okay. I mean, in some areas of life or in business, very organized, very meticulous. Um, in, other, in other aspects, it's very loose. That's awesome. <laughs> Which I think, you know, I think it comes with, uh, I, I guess that's how... Uh, I, it's probably why I've been able to achieve the, the kind of things I have, you know, this side of me that's quite creative and quite, right. you know, very, very loose in thought and just able to go freely with whatever. But then, you know, you also need this side that, that can harness that and can keep it in line and move things in a direction that's uh, productive <laughs> and helpful. It's yeah. not too chaotic. Absolutely. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt your story. I just, uh, <laughs> I had to ask you that really quickly. No, um, but in terms of how I got here, I mean, I guess the, uh, I, I started, uh, if you go way back, I, I always have loved creating silly videos and, mm. and taking photos from, from a pretty young age. 
and that, that maintained through high school. Um, but it wasn't until maybe a few years after leaving high school that it, photography really became part of my life. Um, I studied law for one year at university and really did not enjoy that. <laughs> I bet. Um, no, I mean, it's so hard to, to tell, you know, what, well, you know, which pathway you should go when you're that young, you know, right. I was 16 to 17 when I was like, yeah, law looks fun. looks fun on TV anyway. <laughs> I get to argue for a living. <laughs> Yeah, and, and look cool doing it. I'm yeah, like, yeah. Awesome. That's definitely what I want to do. And then you, you know, study a year of law and you realize, well, oh, actually, this isn't that fun. And if I need to do this kind of stuff for the rest of my life, or if what I'm reading in these books is what my career will look like, then I probably, probably don't want to do that. Yeah. So you kind of moved away from law into arts uh, and commerce. And then at the same time, I'm very passionate. Uh, about music as well so I was playing in in a band and I was also going to concerts pretty regularly and I started working in music journalism mainly as a way to get into concerts for free um, <laughs> and see my favorite bands for free uh, you know on a college budget so you know, <laughs> I, and I, I guess it works yeah <laughs> I needed a way to just get involved in the industry more right. um, and then, you know, I would be at concerts sitting at the back with my little notepad writing notes. Um, and I had a friend who would be way at the front um, of the same concert with a camera. And I would just be so jealous and be looking at him. Well, what are you doing? How, how do you have that job? Um, he's just like meters away from these big rock stars. Like, yeah. Having fun with his life. And, I, and that really got me thinking I started thinking you know maybe that's um that's probably a cooler way to get into concerts for free <laughs> absolutely <laughs> and, and, it, and it looks easier too so you know brain gets ticking still took a while um the way I really got thrust into it is quite funny um I was invited to review a big festival here in WA with some pretty huge names you know Jason Mraz was headlining I think Oh, wow. And, um, you know, I had the media form and then I had to fill it all out. And then there was one box that said, you need a photographer's pass as well. And I did not have a camera or anything, uh, but I, I just took it. I was like, yeah, I do need a photographer's pass. And I'm thinking that, oh, they'll surely know and they'll just won't give it to me. But then they approved it. And I was like, oh, my God. All right, what do I do now? <laughs> I had to quickly buy a camera. my friends. <laughs> I was like, who's got a camera? I got to, <laughs> I can take photos of Jason Mraz. What am I going to do? So you get borrowed a camera, uh, quick Google on how to take concert photos. Um, uh, now you it. really, you really did that. That's like, that's so insane. Like <laughs> you, oh my God. So were you nervous or scared? I was really scared. Like now <laughs> looking back, you know, I can obviously see no one, no one will be able to tell. Don't worry, you're fine. But in my head at that time, I was thinking, what a fraud. Like, right. I'm, I'm marching to the front of these massive crowds with this little camera. Surely, you know, people are going to know I'm just pretending. Like, surely I'm going to get kicked out of something. <laughs> um, but no, it was great. And, you know, it's actually not that hard to take, to get to it. You can get to a pretty... Uh, you can get to a pretender level of photographer right. just by Googling. I reckon, I reckon you can. Um, that, well, that's what I did anyway. That's awesome. That's so a fun. lesson. That's a lesson in and of itself. And <laughs> I, I want to agree with you there. Cause I had a mentor of mine a long time ago that taught me that he's like, you know, the best, the best way to learn anything is to say that you can do something that you can't do and then go figure it out because it will push you and force you to grow and stretch much more than you would push yourself. So that's really cool. Yeah, exactly. And it all, you know, it's to say a long story, it all snowballed from there. Um, and just coming back to what you just said, I've, ha I've had that same advice from many people that I've met, especially in this, in the creative industries, you know, it's the right. kind of industry where, You'll get you'll often get offered things that are probably just a little bit out of your comfort zone or a little bit out of your skill set. Yeah. Just because everybody here, like in the music industry or in, in creative media, you know, you gotta be multi talented if you, you wanna keep the work flowing in. I remember I was on tour with uh US band Matchbox Twenty. 
Oh yeah. Our second to their keyboard player, and um, he was telling me a very similar story. Um, I'm not sure if, whether it was with Matchbox or with a different band, but mm-hmm. he said, yes, uh, I actually didn't know how to play keyboard <laughs> uh, when I got <laughs> offered to play, but somebody asked me and I said, yes, I can play keys. And then he's, well, he was touring with Matchbox 20 when I met him, so he did all right. That's crazy. Now, I want to get into the meat in this for, in just a second, but I have a couple of really quick questions, if you don't mind. So right now, like, what is it that you do most of the time, like, for work now? Is it photography? Is it videography? Uh, I'm just, I'm really curious, because it just looks like you have fun all day and make a lot of money for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is, it has, it started out with photography, obviously, yep. and that was the bulk of it. Now, by now, I would say it's close to a 50-50 split between photography and videography or film production, which is strange. I would not have uh, predicted that um, hmm. back in the day, but it's the, you know, because I don't have it, you know, I never went to film school. Right. You would normally imagine that you normally associate film with something that has a higher barrier of entry in terms of knowledge, equipment, right. Right. skills. Um, but that's all really come crashing down <laughs> over the years, uh, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, and I, I've, obviously I've learned a lot along the way. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, video, video is, um, I think if you're a photographer and you don't uh, know anything about video, you're at a pretty severe disadvantage mm-hmm. to be operating in, this, in the modern world now. It's, right. it's they're so closely tied together now, most clients I get will will often request a video component alongside stills or they'll hire me just for video without any photography at all, which is wild to me, (laughs) but that's that's where we are now. That's crazy. So I want to get your advice because there's one thing that you have done a really good job. And this is one of the big reasons that I was so excited to have you on here. You know, it, it seems like everybody knows 50 people that are photographers, right? Or that take pictures or that do it for fun or they want to become one. But you have just done a fantastic job differentiating yourself. You know, I went to your Instagram, you have hundreds of thousands of followers, same with your Facebook. And it's just, it, it's, it's just so different than anything I've ever seen. Like, how did you do that? You know, it, it, there has to be more to it than just taking beautiful pictures i'm curious as to how you did it and then i want to parlay that into like how other people can differentiate themselves maybe in an industry that is just very crowded Mm. i think i was quite lucky in terms of timing uh Mm. when i started really pushing myself that was around the time you know i mean dslrs were still quite expensive and not so accessible well not 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 as much as now right it's it was really crowded now but i reckon i just got in there before you know (laughs) anyone could get a camera and pretty much take the same kind of photos oh so there's no hope now no i'm kidding yeah (laughs) i reckon it would be much harder yeah now but i mean the same you know it's it's always been tough in any industry that is glamorized and you know looks cool you're going to have a lot more people trying to do the same thing Absolutely. Um, so with myself, I mean, I, I also have the other lucky thing. I, I, I have a unique look, which I uh, never thought was an advantage. <laughs> um, <laughs> for anyone who's not uh, watching videos, have very long hair. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> you do look like Steve Aoki. I look a lot like Steve. Yeah, that's the best way to put it. I look like Steve Aoki. Yeah, um, what's, your, what's your nationality? Uh, I was born here, but my dad's Malaysian and my mum's Chinese. Oh, awesome. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so, well, yeah, and this, this comes back to, you know, differ- differentiating, differentiating yourself. Mm-hmm. I always tell young photographers now, you know, find what is that unique thing about you and just, and just pounce on it and just hone that in. Uh, and it might seem like it's the, the kind of things that you probably strayed away from when you were growing up because people teased you for it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, you know, being this like long-haired, skinny Asian man, not normally uh, something you would full on, fully lean into <laughs> in your normal life. 
But when it comes to creativity and making yourself stand out, I thought that's, that's one way I already stand out without having to change anything about myself. Um, hmm. So when I started thinking along those lines, I, you know, I started putting myself in more photos. Normally I shied away from that. But I thought, you know, in terms of a business advantage, right. you're going to remember someone that looks a little different than your everyday guy that you know that that split that your photographer stereotype so I thought, okay Absolutely. i'll lean into that that's a good thing um and the other part of it was i have quite a silly sense of humor um and i i used to separate that from the photography side of things you know with my uh, mm. I, I went to college uh, i stayed on campus for about six years so we got up to a lot of mischief a lot, a lot of praying a lot of just silly stuff but then i had my you know photography business facebook yep. page no they're very separate you know i want serious wedding clients i want people to take me seriously so i never blended the two worlds together and there was one turning point i remember there was a very um my friend took a photo of me at, while i was working at a festival it was it was a silly photo it was me with a huge uh, camera and lens set up and you know obviously uh, my default pose when having such a setup that involved a very long lens was to <laughs> lean back and just uh, hold the camera down below and make it <laughs> just dumb just very like yeah yeah silly. yeah <laughs> uh, um, anyway I yeah I, I you know I wanted to put that photo up because it was just, it was just funny so i was going to put it on my personal facebook page and then at the last second i was like you know i was going to put it on my actual photography page let's just see what happens <laughs> and it and it was, it was very popular <laughs> you know that's so funny like i want to just harp on this for just a minute because i feel like a lot of people do that even i tried to do that for a long time in my business is like just not not allow yourself to be funny or have a sense of humor or be mm. really stupid or silly. And it's just like, you don't realize like how contagious that is. That's really great. Cause I was watching your video. My favorite one when I was doing research on you was that silhouette that you cut out of that couple mm. uh, where they're posing here. <laughs> You're just taking it around town. And I, <laughs> that was awesome. It was hilarious, but it was really, really, really cool. So that, that was the point I'm trying to make is, is, you know, there's a lot of things that you just said in the last few minutes about differentiating yourself and just figuring out what makes you unique and just really harping on that. And it could be something small, right? Like it'd be, it could be hair. It could be a look. It could be humor. I mean, it could be really anything. Is, is that what you're saying? Yeah. I'm, there's, there's so much outside of actual photography talent or skill or whatever industry we're talking about. Right. That's one side, you know, by itself and you can work on that and you can improve that and you can work to be you know, the best you can be. That's, that's, that's great. And that's one thing, but the other side of it is there's millions of other people doing the same thing. What is it about you that's different? What is it about you that someone's going to say, oh, do you know this photographer? He's dot, dot, dot. You know, you want them right. to be able to say something to their friend that is just for you. And if you don't, have that then um then you know it's going to be you're going to have a hard time for people to you know pick you out of lineup or when a client's you know putting together a pool to hire from you, you want to be top of mind in, in any Absolutely. way you can and it doesn't have to be something as silly as uh, having camera dick <laughs> jokes on your, your instagram <laughs> but you know, you could, it could be that you're the you're the nicest guy in the industry, right. or you're the most hardworking guy. It can even, it can be things like that. But you just need to you know really self order and 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 pinpoint what what do you think it is about you, or what what do you want it to be about you that people talk about, and really go for it, and not settle for being just a pr a pretty good photographer. You know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's it's just great advice. Like, you know, when I think of like movie directors, 
first comes to mind like Quentin Tarantino, right? Who just yeah. <laughs> like exaggerates like crazy, but it's funny, right? Like you, somebody gets shot and like 55 gallons of blood comes out of their, like their chest. It's just, it's, it's hilarious. And you make a, a really good point there. My next question, Jared is along the lines, and this is something when you talked about some of the things that you speak on that I, I thought was really fascinating and that I really wanted to learn as well. And I wanted to have you just share, if you don't mind, it's just an, on creativity. You know, do you believe that creativity is a learned skill, a combination of talent, skill? Like, what's just what's your philosophy on creativity? I think it's a mixture of both, and I think the mistake that a lot of people make is thinking that creativity is only something that you are born with, or they think that uh, you know, I'm not creative. I can't do that. I can't do that. A lot of or people say that person, the other side of it, the creative person taking that for granted and saying, yes, I'm, I'm a creative guy. You know, I've always been creative and, and just leaving it there at that base level. Right. Thinking that that'll just be with me um, through everything. But I, I have started taking the view that no creative is some, creativity is something that you can build on and learn. And even if you feel like you are a creative person, there's no limit to how, how, much more you can hone in on that and right. focus your skills. And I want to tell you one story. This, this, yeah, this is where I really had my revelation about this. I once, um, I was commissioned by Canon Australia to, to go on a photography assignment and hike through the world's largest cave, which happens to be in Vietnam. And it's a five day hike just inside the cave and it has its own weather systems. It's amazing. Five really days. Amazing place. Yeah. So you five days without getting out. And you know, obviously there's no showers, there's nothing. You're just oh in darkness and water for a very long time. And I was you, you can only get in with this tour company. And I remember filling in this application form. And you had to fill in all these things uh about your fitness level. And it was, you know, how many times you go to the gym, how many times you go for a run. And I, I had to, I had to, I mean, I was basically lying on the application. I was like, yeah, I go to the gym all the time. I do this all the time. Cause I was scared that if I was truthful, that they would say it's too hard for you. And, and I had no idea, obviously like they made it sound like it was the most intense hike ever. And I'm naturally, I'm pretty okay. I, I do hikes all the time for water, yeah. for water, but I was scared from this form. And then, I, thought, I don't want to t rock up and be the weakest person there. Um, so, you know, I filled in the form and then I thought, okay, well, I, I've got to get myself ready for this thing now, <laughs> just in case. So I started going for runs, which I, you know, it's not something I naturally do. It's like law school. Or ever done. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so uh, I started running around the park as my training and very quickly, I, my body started rejecting it <laughs> and thinking, <laughs> what are you doing, mate? You, you, this is not what we do. We don't run around the park. And I was just running laps around this, this park and I remember you know, getting stuck into it. And then I, my mind was doing this thing where I'd come up to the corner and then I'd be like, I'd, I'd tell myself do five laps and that's fine. Right. But every time I come to the corner, <laughs> my brain would, pick, would say, just cut the corner. Who cares? <laughs> like who's, Who's watching? It's just for you. And, and that's when I started realizing, wait, um, like, I mean, I could cut the corner, but the whole point of me going on this run is to right. push, make myself uncomfortable and push it a little bit more each time so that I can do it next time. Right. More easily. Like there's no reason to cut the corner at all. Like we might as well just not run <laughs> and having that revelation really like I started applying it to the creativity and the way that that we need to train ourselves in creative pursuits as well and and not be comfortable with just staying at the level that you're at. Right. And and it's it's so much easier to to understand this when it's something as tangible as, as physical exercise. Not tangible, but it it makes sense. It makes sense that Absolutely. you don't stop lifting weights as soon as it gets hard, you don't just, that's not when you stop <laughs> because the whole point of it is to push yourself so hard that you're, you know, you're at a breaking point and then the next time you do it, it's easier. 
but it's so hard to to picture that in in creativity terms but you, you have to you have to tell yourself that for any kind of creative pursuit you have to be um, you have to put yourself in those uncomfortable positions too you have to like we said before you have to stretch and do something that you didn't think you could and it's going to be really stressful and really mess you up but you have to keep pushing yourself as if it's a muscle right because that's how you'll grow. And, and I know a lot of creative people and myself included, you know, it's very easy to kind of just stick to what you're pretty good at and stick to what, you know, works and what creatively just makes sense to you and comes naturally. But if that's where you stop and that's, and you just leave it at that comfortable level, you'll never expand. You'll never grow and you'll never, you know, get bigger and better work because you're always staying at that same level. Gotcha. Now, is that why is that why you push your like uh, just an example with photography, right? Is that why you push yourself to do things like go to Antarctica or the cave in Vietnam because it's it's different? It'll like how does that develop your creativity? Just put you in a situation or an environment where you have to think differently or do things differently. Yeah, exactly. And when the outcome isn't mm-hmm. assured. Gotcha. I mean, plenty of work. There's plenty of work that or, or offers that come into my inbox where I think, great, piece of cake, easy money. I know what I'm doing. It's kind of like going through the motions. Just, just do it. Right. Just go. And it's great to have, you know, a, a lot of those kind of jobs where you don't really have to push yourself. You know what you're doing. You know you're great at it. That's great. But if you have to also take on the jobs. Absolutely. Like, like the cave or... Um, can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I mean, even the cutout video, that, that wasn't a job, but it was a lot of effort and yeah. a lot of, you know, seemingly unnecessary effort, <laughs> but it's those things where you push yourself. Uh, and I always like to say, one of my photography tips um, <clears throat> for people is if you want to get a unique photo, then you just need to walk further than everyone else. You know, if everyone else is stopping at this one spot to take a photo of, this mountain, why don't you just walk a bit more <laughs> away from the crowd? Your photo is going to be different. Like you have to keep going past where everybody else stops. And that's the same thing with creativity and with the crazy videos that I do. I want to stop all the time with that cutout video. Sure. I, you know, the voice in my head is like, that's enough. You've put in enough effort. <laughs> it's already a pretty good video. Like we can kind of stop now. Yep. Then like, no, we need to, we need to keep going. Let's, let's carry this freaking life size cut out through the desert. Who's ever done that? That's hilarious. <laughs> keep going further. And each step you take further than where everyone else has stopped is, is you know, that, that's why people love the video. That's why it's gone viral because you watch it and you think this is a crazy and silly amount of effort that someone has done. Yeah. Um, I'll put that, uh, the, the link to that video in the show notes of this episode, but you're absolutely right. It was like, I think it was, uh, I think it was maybe Maroon five. They recorded a music video of them just crashing weddings. I saw that. (laughs) And man, billions and billions of views. I mean, it's just like, you're so right. So how did the cave thing work out? I mean, not to go off topic, like, was it, (laughs) was it insane? Like, was it a really crazy experience? It was insane, but you know what? The, the exercise (laughs) part of it, not, they're not that bad. Oh, okay. Probably the fittest out of everyone there. (laughs) All those circles you ran. They, they really scared me into that one. But no, there was definitely, you know, those seniors on that trip. It was, I was, I had nothing to worry about, but I'm glad that I did because it, it really transformed my way of thinking. That's awesome. So I want to ask you really quick, if you could go back in time to your, well, how old are you, by the way? I was going to say your 18 year old self, but you look really I'm, young. Maybe that was like two years I'm ago. <laughs> Oh, you're 32. Okay. <laughs> so, I was going to say, if you could go back in time to your 18 year old self and you're like, well, I'm 19. No. Um, so, but it, if you could go back in time to your 18 year old self and give yourself a bit of advice, what would that advice be knowing what you know now in terms of career and success and pursuing a dream? I'm curious to know. Hmm. I mean, what we talked about before was a great one, just about uh, celebrating the unique things about yourself. Because really growing up, those 
are other things you try and hide because you get teased or because you stand out. The last thing you want to do is stand out. Since we've already talked about that, I'm going to say um, my advice would be that you can, it is possible to, you don't actually have to choose between doing something you love and making a lot of money. Um, and I always, I thought that, I thought that myself up until, you know, maybe five years ago. Right. When I chose the, the photography path versus the lawyer path, you know, it, it seemed like a clear decision. Like, well, I'm going to be sad, but make a lot of money going this way. Or I can have more fun with my life and enjoy, enjoy it a lot more. But, you know, it's not going to be great in terms of money and financial success. You know, it seemed like two separate paths. Right. But as you know as i've worked with a lot more people that are successful in creative field as i've become more successful and being able to you know buy an apartment and things like that uh, uh, it's taught me that you actually don't have to choose between those paths you can you can be successful in work you can do what you love and if you do it well and you work really hard at it you can the money will come with it too it so you don't have to choose. <laughs> yeah, no, it's so true. I, um, I can't, it's a book called a thousand true fans. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but no. phenomenal book. And it's just basically like, it talks about how there's so many niches and micro niches out there that all you have to do is choose something and get good at it. And you'll separate yourself from everybody. And you don't need billions and billions of fans or follower. Well, like you have, but you, you can make an incredible living with just a thousand true fans at, at whatever it is that you do, whether it's wow. art or guns, you know, that's just, and it's funny because, you know, your advice throughout this interview is very subtle, but it's, it's really important. You know, like you gave some really, really valuable nuggets here. And, and I just want to reiterate that because you're, you know, most people are just trying to fit in with everybody else. They don't want to stand out. They are trying to, not be looked down on or made fun of, but it's that thing that separates you that will create success. I mean, it's just really, really, really great advice. Now, I know we are short on time, Jared. I, I just really want to spend the last five minutes just for fun, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, I'm reading I'm on your website right now, and I just want to have you share a couple of your really crazy ass adventures because I'm like, I'm, I'm on your website reading right now. You have... <laughs> Hung out of an open plane window shooting the aerial landscapes of Iceland. You have captured portraits of Maasai children in remote Tanzania. Spent days hiking through the world's largest caves. You shot the Milky Way and got stranded in the Namibian desert. Uh, you've been to Antarctica. So tell me, like, what's, what was the craziest adventure in, like, like, out of all of them, if you had to say? Oh man, craziest one. Or one of them. <laughs> I know it's like, what's your favorite movie? I, I get it. Okay, well maybe the the Namibia one's quite funny. Um, we uh, I was tra traveling with my friend Janelle Boyd, who's an amazing wildlife photographer, mm -hmm. and we just had finished running a work photography workshop at Namibia. We we're doing a lot of wildlife stuff, and then after that finished, we thought let's really push it because I want to get to Dead Flay which is this, I'm sure you've seen photos of before. It's a very famous yep. place where, you know, at a certain time of day, these dead trees are silhouetted um, against the, a, a massive sand dune behind it. And if the sun's right in the exact right position, it just looks unreal. It looks surreal. It looks like a cardboard cutout. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Anyway, that's what we're trying to do. And um we it was a really long way away so we pushed it we drove all day tag teaming in and out we finally got there just in time to get that amazing picture and it was cr and we were so happy with that we, we, <laughs> we got there we were running around with we the only ones there so like you cannot believe how exhausted we were and it, we were just running around and then you know sunset happens gets darker we're still kind of just walking around um and, and we both separately go off uh, into our own areas um, mm -hmm. just to shoot our own things that we're probably doing time lapses or whatever it gets darker and darker and then at some point we both independently just pass out on the ground um, and 
and I remember just waking up suddenly to maybe a coyote or jackal or something howling in the distance. I woke up and it was pitch black and I looked around, couldn't see my friend anywhere. I was like, what has happened? Has, has he left? What's going on? And there's nobody for like hundreds of miles. There's probably. nobody there. Oh my gosh. It's, and I just couldn't see anything. And I ended up just walking around for maybe 20 minutes, just trying to find my friend in the darkness. Um, and eventually I hear this like, little camera click every 30 seconds, you know? <laughs> and I have to wait another 30 seconds to hear it again. And finally I find him, he's passed out on the ground. His, his camera's doing a time lapse. And I wake him up, I'm like, dude, what are, like, what's going on? Like, did we just like fall asleep for like five hours? And we're oh just, my like, God. Dude, were you not like scared like, a, like an animal would like attack you? I was, I was a little bit scared because we could definitely hear wild animals and there's, oh my there's God. nobody else there. There would be nothing stopping. If something wanted to get us, it would have a very easy time. So <laughs> that's crazy. My second question is before we wrap up is what would you say is one of the most beautiful places that you've ever been to? Just surreal imagery. It's a pretty cliche you want to say now, but it's gotta be Iceland. That's just <sighs> it's just the dream. You know, I first visited maybe 2013. Mm. And it's just the most amazing place uh, for a photographer. Just the light quality. The, mm. And normally when you travel to places like this, you, you, have, you have a major attraction here. Then you have to, you know, drive hours and hours to get to this next spot. And then, you know, Iceland just has an amazing thing around every corner. Even just driving along a plain middle road, you're looking out the window and thinking, mm. this is epic. Lava fields, you know, with green moss, lush green moss covering it. There's a glacier over here. There's a frozen waterfall over this side. It's just, uh, you just, I just, I can never believe it when I'm there, especially in winter. That's, That's when I feel like it's, it's for someone that has grown up in Australia. Just, oh. uh, that's Man. yeah i've always wanted to go like it's the the photos are insane and i just watched uh, eurovision with will ferrell which was shot mostly in, in <laughs> <saw> iceland <laughs> and, and it made me want to go all over again um my and that's what it looks like in that movie you know the frozen oh. waterfalls the northern lights it's all there and the elves not kidding <laughs> Well, maybe most was believing them. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my last question is: What a uh, a lot of your photos are just man, they're just surreal. Like, what camera do you use to take a lot of those photos? Is it is there are they all Canon? Like Canon the five D or the EOS? Mm, mm, the most of them you were seeing are from the five D various versions of that five D Mark two, three, and four. Gotcha. Although now I've started using the the R, EOS R and hopefully it's in the R5, which you don't know, photography, that's mirrorless. Um, and we are moving into a mirrorless world. It's a lot of photographers are going to resist that, but it is, it's the future. So if you're not shooting mirrorless now, I'm pretty much guaranteed you will be <laughs> within five or six years. You won't have an option if you want to keep up, up with technology. So um, that's yeah, yeah that's awesome well i appreciate that jared listen this has been a very insightful interview i want to thank you for your time um before we go i want to just have you share with the audience where how people can connect with you follow your content um even book your services one of the things that actually me and my fiance were really interested in was maybe having you take us one day uh book you for uh, a night out like some photography like you have okay. some really cool services but i just want to uh, have you share a little bit about how people can connect, follow your content or some of the things that you offer. Mm. Uh, to keep up to date, Instagram. I, I love, love hanging out on Instagram. So that's Jared saying on Instagram, just made a TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's going to get banned it's, here, I think, in the US. Uh, yeah, I've been hearing. <laughs> I mean, great time for me to finally look into it. The day that it gets banned. But um, man, Speaking of creativity, that is that is the wild west. I, it's it's overwhelming, but you, people are so creative on TikTok. It is a step above everything. Absolutely, else. I agree, hundred percent. 
people just share pretty mundane things about their life most of the time. But <laughs> don't, man, you, you people put in so much effort, and that's 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 somewhere where I see creativity really getting pushed. That's you awesome. To, you, everybody's a storyteller on there. Um, so yeah, yeah. Well, Instagram, TikTok, well, unless it's banned, um, and just my website is probably the best. So kind of. Uh, Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. I'll put all that in the show notes, Jared. Look, man, thank you for your time. I appreciate you getting up early in the morning. I know how it is when you're creative it's <laughs> sleep till noon, stay up till four in the morning. Uh, I want to thank you for your time, man. It's, this was a pleasure and uh, hopefully, you know, one day we can have you back on the podcast. Awesome. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.